Hello, I'm Lakeisha Bennett, and you're listening to the MetaVance podcast series. In this podcast, we're talking to Jason Bryant, founder and CEO of Redwood Recovery Solutions. Thank you for joining us, Jason. Thank you for having me. So um, just tell us about your organization, Redwood Recovery Solutions, and what sets you apart from your competitors. Of course. So Redwood Recovery Solutions is an organization that was founded by myself and a couple other guys after um, being in the lead generation and online marketing space for the last um, roughly eight years. We started off in an office that was about 10 by 10 in July of 2008 um, with an idea to become a lead generation and a marketing firm in the automotive and auto insurance space. Mm-hmm. Grew from being two guys in an office, again, just really pretty small to 450 employees in three countries. Um, and in the process of doing that, realized that we really had a heart also for helping people. And we turned um, that into actually a new model after having the sale of our of our first company, AutoCricket.com, in August of 2013. Um, and we started Redwood with the idea that we could do marketing and lead generation in a space that not only um, was a, uh, a industry that could could use the service, but also one that helped people. And mm-hmm. so we're really excited and proud to be a part of that uh, that movement in that space. Um, we work nationwide with treatment centers currently um, that provide substance abuse and recovery services to individuals and families that um, that need those those services. And what we do is we produce and procure marketing efforts that um, are typically helpline related um, and we take those calls and route them directly to treatment centers who can help match up their financial, cultural, and clinical need um, Mm -hmm. either with their program or with a program that they work closely with. So that's kind of the the basics of who we are, where we've come from, and um, and kind of the the direction that we are uh, we're currently on. Awesome. Um, it includes uh, treatmentcalls.com, and um, you have 1-800-ADDICTS is what you have as well? Correct. Yep. So those are those are our, our brands uh, typically to um, the general public as well as to treatment centers nationwide. Awesome. Now, um, currently in the industry, there is a fine line between the call center marketing and patient brokering. How does um, treatmentcalls.com and 1-800-ADDICTS stay within the ethical line? That's a great question, and you're 100% right. There are lots of um, practices that are currently in the space that that are not ethical or legal. Um, What we've done and what we decided to do is is a couple of things. One, we um, got legal opinions around our practices to make sure that we fall within the the guidelines, make sure that everything that we're doing is is legal. Mm -hmm. Um, We've also formed an advisory board from the ethics perspective to make sure that what we're doing is ethical. And then we went one step further after we went out and got legal opinions surrounding what we're doing. We also hired in-house uh, attorney um, that serves as our in-house legal counsel to make sure that on a day-to-day basis we are uh, following the letter of the law and, of course, making sure that we are doing things the right way. So we take it very seriously that we um, we do it the right way. Awesome. Um, now, you have been pretty busy this year. Um, you've attended several behavioral health care panel series across the country. Um, you've also taken part in MedAvance's own BH Power Breakfast. Can you just tell us about your roles um, in these panel series or these events? Of course. Uh-huh. So we've been asked and, and certainly have taken the opportunity whenever possible to participate in um, speaking engagements and uh, series across the country. Um, we've enjoyed the behavioral health um, panel series with Vendome and, and of course, with MedAvance. Um, and the, the roles that we've we've sat in uh, typically are in some sort of advisory capacity um, that has something to do with marketing um, or making money in the behavioral health space. Um, the the typical tone that we like to take is that it's okay to um, do well for yourself while helping others. and um, Being able to kind of share that, share our story, share our product and our mission, and share the idea that um, when you have something that you're proud of in a in a service, when you have something that you're proud of as it pertains to the clinical side, 
it is okay to make money um, in in providing that service to those who are in need. Awesome. Um, I guess I have another question as far as um, when you're speaking to treatment providers, um, what are some other like misconceptions they may have about um, the business side of behavioral health care? Like you're saying, it's okay to make money and help people. What are some other, um, I guess, misconceptions that they may have? That's a really good question. The, the one that I, I would say comes to mind most is that from an internal perspective that um, just because they've been in uh, the substance abuse and recovery space for a period of time or just because they're in recovery um, themselves in some instances that that is enough to um, to provide um, the right kind of guidance and the right kind of um, call answering as it pertains to our product um, services and so I think that oftentimes treatment centers will will have individuals on their admissions team and their marketing team that um, have gone through the program, which I think is wonderful, um, but that in itself doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to be great on the phones. The other thing is is that most treatment centers believe that they have the answer in, um, in how to, to, the best practice, I guess you could say, to answer these phone calls, and, and oftentimes they're, they're less willing to be coached in the process. And, one thing that we really pride ourselves on is, is the fact that we listen um, with consent, obviously, of the consumer and the treatment center to how these calls are answered mm -hmm. and how they are worked on a regular basis. So um, we really pride ourselves on understanding how a call should be worked. Um, and the treatment centers that heed the advice that we're able to provide oftentimes do, do much better than those who choose not to. Um, there are some other misconceptions as it pertains to some of the things that we do. Um, most most treatment centers misconception with what we do is that we are a call center and for for most treatment groups we are not that we're actually a marketing arm we mm -hmm. do legitimate marketing that drives legitimate phone calls um, we don't work with um, with unscrupulous practices we don't work um, typically with with outside agencies uh, we we try to do most of what we do in house so that we can control the the quality and the integrity of our product so there's a lot of kind of grouping together, I'd say, that, that if you're a marketing company or a call center, that must mean that, you, again, kind of border that patient brokering line. But, but we really are proud that we, we are absolutely black and white with how we feel about that. Awesome. Um, so what are your goals, I guess, um, as we look ahead for a new year, 2016, as it relates to getting your message uh, out across the country to providers? What we've done for 2016 is we have put together a pretty robust marketing and um, exhibit uh, schedule. We have roughly 40 events that are on our calendar for uh, for 2016 all across the country with with different groups and different opportunities. We also have uh, a couple of new product lines kind of on the horizon that we're excited about that will include some additional marketing services as well as um, a completely new side to our business, which includes um, kind of a legal counsel perspective. So we are we're excited to launch those um, probably in the next uh, 60 to 90 days. And uh, you know, there's there's some big things that will happen from our front. So very exciting stuff. Awesome. Now, um, if I guess a provider wanted to get in touch with you, um, how can they uh, how can they get in touch with you? That's a great question. So uh, they can they can reach out either through treatmentcalls.com or on 1-800-ADDICTS. Um, they are absolutely welcome to dial into 1-800-ADDICTS, and there's a prompt that leads them directly into our uh, into our staff. So either either route would be the the appropriate way. All right, great. So um, thank you so much for joining us, Jason, and telling us more about your business and your practices. It is my pleasure. Awesome. Um, now, you mentioned you have about 40 events coming up in 2016. I believe one of those is um, a behavioral health or BH Power Breakfast, ser one of the series events um, coming up in Orange County, California. So um, that one is on February 17, 2016, and um, you're going to be one of the guest speakers for that. Um, 
and as far as the BH Power Breakfast series, we'll have other events scheduled across the country from Dallas to Atlanta, Chicago, and Boston throughout 2016. So um, for those of you listening, if you want more information about that, you can go to medevancebilling.com uh, forward slash BH Power. Again, medevancebilling.com forward slash BH Power. And we just want to thank you all for listening to the MetaVance podcast series. It's brought to you by MetaVance Billing Service, the leader in revenue cycle management for behavioral health care providers and toxicology services nationwide. With more than 140 employees and averaging more than $60 million in transmitted claims monthly, MetaVance Billing Service has the manpower, technology, and expertise to increase your facility's revenue. If you'd like to learn more about MetaVance, just go to MetaVanceBilling.com or call toll-free at 1-888-407-9920.